internet friends! Welcome to my channel and welcome to another day of trying to get better at cinematic vlogging. We are headed to Big Rock Park today in Bellingham, Washington and the main focus for today will be to capture the 35 pieces of art in a beautiful and cinematic way. I think I'm going to be working on movement, angles, and lighting because the main feature should be the art. There also shouldn't be that much story to tell and if I'm looking at this from a one minute perspective at 35 pieces we're looking at like a second per piece around. <laughs> so I'm gonna just try and keep that in mind when filming and also keep in mind that if I were to do like a whoosh transition for 35 pieces that would be like a whoosh less than every second and I don't think anyone watching who might have vertigo would appreciate that. So we're gonna keep that to a minimum but I am going to try and incorporate some of them. Those are my notes to keep in mind for today but I do want to go over some notes from my previous day. So you guys know that I was having a lot of struggles with the wind and the rain and trying to find the storyline and I do think it went together pretty okay. The only thing that I would add to what I had already said during filming would be to make sure to bring Ziploc baggies. I had camera wipes that are fabric and cloth and they got wet because my whole bag got wet and at that point it kind of became useless and I ended up making it harder on myself when just a couple of Ziploc baggies would have saved me a whole lot of heartache. So some spare Ziploc baggies are definitely joining my hair ties and going right in the back. And then while I was editing I noticed that everything had a very gray feel to it which I did try and play with when I realized it but I do wish that I had noticed during filming that certain colors were popping and that would have been a great way to play with contrast especially since I was doing the city to more of a secluded beach which are pretty contrasting in themselves. So having a color contrast to play with would have also amplified that feeling. Like the parasailers parasail was orange and everything else was gray. There were very brightly colored flowers against a gray marina and if I had just worn something like a yellow raincoat it would have made the scene where I'm sitting with the umbrella next to the ocean a lot more compelling. It would have been prettier because I was just wearing gray and it was against a gray backdrop so I did kind of get washed out in that scene or even like a brightly colored umbrella. So on gray days I'm gonna try and remember wear something bright if that's the feeling I'm going for. Maybe I want dark and moody but I do think that the safest bet is to have something bright that you can play around with. Also it dawned on me that if I was playing around with contrast I could have conveyed the contrasting feelings within myself a little bit better which would have given me that symbolism element that I have been looking for. I'm noticing basically all my notes are I should have brought more stuff. And then the only other note that I have is that I may need to take a pause on the walking and talking segments in my videos. I do try to walk at a certain pace and that makes me breathe heavier. And then also I have things like traffic and the weather trying to fight against me when I'm trying to film on the go. And it is very hard to edit around. I have not been happy with any of the edits from my walking and talking segments. So unless we're at a location or there's something important that I need to share with you guys like me being lost, we're gonna keep the talking parts to my designated YouTube room. And while we're on the subject of me being lost frequently, it is not a bit. I am not doing that on purpose or to be quirky. It is just the fact that I am really bad with directions. The simple fact is is that I am just like directionally challenged. I don't know what it is. It's always been that way. Like when I was in the third grade my mom walked me to school that was like six blocks away and maybe had one left turn and she decided it was time for me to learn how to get to and from school by myself. So one morning she walked me there. She told me to take note of all the landmarks. She made sure I knew how to get back with the directions in reverse. Like she quizzed me on it. She she walked me there. She made sure I was good. It wasn't like there was like a whole bunch of skyscrapers in the way. It was just a random neighborhood in Nebraska from a rural town and it should have been super easy and I was feeling very confident at the beginning. I don't know what happened. I got home two hours after I left school trying to find my way home and there were a fleet of cop cars at our house. This was before Amber Alerts. And it was the middle of winter in Nebraska so I can see why the cops were out looking for me. No one found me. I don't know where I was. I don't know how anyone couldn't find me and I don't know how it took two hours but it's just always been the case. I also got lost in Las Vegas because I went 
out the wrong way of a bathroom at the Mirage Hotel? Or was it the Riviera? I don't know. I have a history of getting lost for hours. It's nothing new. Luckily, this is the age of cell phones, so even though my GPS isn't the greatest, I can at least call for help if I need it. I'm gonna say the only reason why Portland was so easy for me to navigate around was because the city was divided into four sections, Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, Southeast, and it was divided by a major road and bridges. So if you like said, oh, I'm going to Northeast Cooch Street, you knew exactly like where it was, at least in what subsection of the city you were in. All cities should be set up like that. Okay, so with all of that discussed, and kind of an embarrassing look into my history, but also hopefully give you guys an understanding of why I'm finding it so difficult to find these places. Luckily, Steven is gonna be driving me to the location today and picking me up. I will get roughly an hour and a half to do the best I can. So with that being said, let's head out. captured all the images I want to capture. 
I've tried a few different angles and a few different transitions. I am realizing that in my head I had more ideas now that I'm out here it kind of just went whoosh and I probably should have written them down because I did look at the art pieces and I was like oh it'd be really cool if I did this transition and now that I'm out here it's it's gone. Honestly with art it kind of feels more natural for it to be stationary and then showcase what it shows so that might be part of the reason. I have some time before Steven picks me up so I'm just gonna walk around the big rock garden park because it's really cool here and it isn't just about the rock art they made sure that the landscape and the scenery itself is just gorgeous so it'd be a shame not to show you guys this. So this is the first artwork that you notice when you get down here then there's off to the side and there are plenty <laughs> of different options of which way to go. So you do kind of want to keep track of where you've been to make sure you've got all of them or at least mentally check off 35 pieces. I'm missing one so we're gonna have to go through here and try and find that one anyway. It's called Helping Hands. I did not see it and I was very excited about it so I want to see it. I'm also gonna need to look for more opportunities for a thumbnail. I did get one I don't really like it. I don't think it showcases that this is a rock art garden. I just kind of stood next to a big rock formation. So if you guys see anything that I missed where I could have had a cool transition out of it or I should have captured it a different way or it would have been a good thumbnail, please let me know in the comments. Where are these helping hands? Yeah, Lots of cool little places to sit and enjoy the day. And lots of little hidden paths to walk. David Marshall Sculpture Gallery. Canadian sculptor David Marshall introduced outdoor public sculpture exhibits to the Pacific Northwest and Western Canada. I got this one. That's this guy. That one. I'm missing this one. I got the turtle. The turtle's adorable. Got him, got him, got him, and him. Where, are the, where is this one? This is the one I gotta find. And they are all kind of within the same vicinity. So it should be somewhere around here. Another little path that leads nowhere. That path leads nowhere. <laughs> this is a little path to a path that leads nowhere. This is the only place that I haven't traveled and it's because I assumed it led nowhere, but sure, why not? I got time. It led nowhere. But here is the view from it. It's still a gorgeous view. So the one I'm looking for is actually the most recent out of these from 2019. So it may not actually be over here, which is a good thing because it's definitely not over here with my eyes. So, which means there's still hope that it might be here. Just, just not over here.
So I still haven't found it. I found a card, but it does not say where everything is located. I'm starting to get bit by mosquitoes. I've got a little bit more time left. I'm going, I'm gonna walk this one more time, grab any extra shots that I think that I may want. Maybe the ideas that I had that were lost could come back, so. And I still wanna find those dang hands. But if not, that's okay. It's very gorgeous out here, like I've said. A few of these pieces have really intrigued me. And that's the best I can hope for for an outing and trying to capture it. So with that being said, I will show you guys the end result and say I'll see you guys again soon. Bye! I know I have the power to let things